And when I tell you, the moment I saw him playing with the switch knife and opening it and closing it under his sleeve, I was like, oh, nah. My heart dropped to the floor. Oh, we're recording. What is up, YouTube? Welcome to another video. It's your girl, Curly, and what's poppin'? What's up, y'all? Um, so yeah, today is today's video is going to be different because something happened to me recently that I felt like I had to tell you guys. So today is going to be a story time. And the story time is how I avoided getting stabbed on the train. Y'all. And this just happened to me recently too. Hold on, let me fix it. And this just happened to me recently. This isn't like an ancient story from long, long ago. Like this literally happened to me two or three days ago. So yeah, it was kind of crazy, but I felt like it was an important topic to bring to you guys in case you guys ever go through this. And I found that there were a lot of lessons in what happened. And the main lesson, I'll just say it now and then it'll make and then it'll make sense. The main lesson I learned from this was do not let your ego get the best of you. There were a lot of others, but that one stood out to me completely. So let's get into the video. Be back. <laughs> Focus, focus. Okay, you guys. So this probably happened to me about two or three days ago. And it might have been, well, it was definitely this past Sunday. Today is Tuesday. So it was this past Sunday at around 7.30 a.m. I'm on the train on my way to the city. And it was just a hectic day. I'm not gonna lie, that whole train subway experience, that day specifically, every day's been crazy, recently especially, but that day specifically was next level. So I'm on the train. And I don't know if you guys are anything like me where when the train is arriving onto the station, I'm literally running to see if there are any homeless people sleeping on the chairs because I'm not, it's too early and I'm really not trying to deal with any of that, to be honest. So I'm running with the cart like, okay, like is that clear? No, boom. And they be in the corners, like you really have to look. They be in the cut, right? So boom, I see one, no. So now I'm running to the next cart. And in this one, there were probably like three in this cart. So I'm like, freak. And you know, the train be on the station for like less than, 30 seconds and I'm running to the third car and I'm like oh, okay there was one there but there were other people around so and it wasn't that crazy so I'm like okay cool now we arrive at the next stop and this Jamaican this older Jamaican lady comes in and she's like me want my money me want um what is that me want my blood clot my blood clot money me want my thousand dollars where my thousand dollars going off and I'm like damn like it's mad early but maybe she's talking to somebody one of her family members out in Jamaica that's literally what I'm thinking and she's Caribbean so I'm like this is crazy but mm, it could pass and then halfway through the through the ride I turn around and I notice that she's not even on the phone she has a phone but it's not on whatsoever so I'm like oh my goodness because you know anybody who's capable of yelling like that on the train in public they, they down for whatever so i'll be like side eyeing that so yeah so she's not on the phone and now to get to my destination i have to do what make one transfer from the six to the four train and guess what station i have to transfer at if y'all from new york y'all know the y'all know why i'm saying this 125th and lexington that is like one of the worst stations, in my opinion, to just have to transfer at because the craziness that goes down, and don't get me wrong, I love Harlem, but that 125th and Lexington is literally next level. It's like zombie zone. Like it is crazy. Where does my Jamaican friend get off at? 125th and I'm like, oh, makes a lot of sense. It just makes sense. You know what's crazy though? You can actually tell 
where people are getting off on the trains. Like you can literally, it's it's a mental game that you can play or you could play with whoever you're taking the train with. But you can kind of guess based off looks and mannerisms where people are getting off. But that's besides the point. She goes out, she comes out the train and she's still screaming. She's still screaming and she keeps, now I'm noticing that she's repeating herself and just saying the same thing. So I'm like, okay, let me distance myself from her. I still hear her, but at least let me distance myself. So now the four train comes and the way and the way the station is set up and the amount of people that be in that station is set up, there's no running around to see if there are any homeless people sleeping on the chair. There's none of that happening. Wherever you stand that, that's just where you're getting in because one, the four train low key be packed and two, there just be so many homeless people and crackheads and just so much of that on that in that station that you're not trying to be run. So I get on the four train. Maybe we're like two stops into the trip. And and I see this tall black guy. He has a suit on, he has on a scarf, he has on like work shoes, but he doesn't have a bag, right? So I'm like okay you look together but things are not adding up if that makes sense i was like okay and those are small things that i notice side note you know what's one thing that i be noticing when i'm on the train of course anybody could be the suspect it, it, they can literally look like you and i like it can literally be anyone right but something that i look at is i look at the shoes and i'm like are those shoes neat crisp like do those look like some shoes you would not care about so that if you were to rob somebody or do something, you don't care to run or crease those sneakers. Like typically, if you have nice flashy shoes, I don't really think that you are gonna try, are you on the train trying to rob people and run from people and uh, you know, like get them messed up. That might be hella, hecka naive, but that's just, that's just like stuff that I go through in my mind or stuff that helps me, that helped me decipher. Now, if your shoes are beat up, you know, they got the laces tied, I'm like, mm, and you're already acting up, I'm not, I don't mean so, oh, I meant to say, this was, this is an important uh, part. So, the Fortran was kind of packed, there was like some space for you to move around, but it was relatively packed, and I was standing by the door. If you guys are not from New York, and you guys, or you guys haven't taken the train or the subway here, um, I'll try to post a picture here. And if not, this is just gonna be me. Um, uh, I'll post a picture there so that you guys can have a reference of where I'm standing on the train. So I'm by the door, but I'm standing up, right? So there are seats right below me, kind of like to the left of me. And there was this lady sitting there. She was, you know, watching a movie on her phone and she had her headphones on, she was chilling. And then this guy comes in and I was like, okay, you know, I'm kind of just like reading the room a little bit and seeing if this is something I should be worried about. So everything is chilling, everything is calm. I have my music going or I might have been watching something I don't remember, but I was on my phone and he's like diagonal to me. He's literally like to the left of me. To you guys, it looks like the right, but he was to my left in person. And I didn't think, I, I was just looking at what he was wearing. Um, he didn't have no headphones on, nothing, no bag, like I said. And he was like just moving a lot of things in his pocket. So I'm like, okay, whatever. And then he crosses over, he crosses me. And now he's standing on this side of me. So I have harder time being able to look at him directly, but I could still see him. Like he's close to me, but the girl can now actually like see him from a distance. So I'm looking down at the girl and I see that she keeps staring over there and I'm like, okay, noted. I can't literally stare at him in his eyes without him noticing that I'm, that I notice him, if that makes sense. So it's like, it's a tricky, it's a tricky situation, but I'm looking like at his lower half. So then I hear things like, like I'm just hearing like a lot of commotion and I'm like, okay. So now I put my music all the way down the lady is still looking over there and then and then she puts her phone in her pocket in her jacket so i'm like okay that's another clue let me put my phone in my pocket just in case anything pops off or i have to run or i have to do this or i have to defend myself or whatever let me just have my phone secured 
So I give it, I give it a, a little more time and you know when you just feel like something is not right. And if you guys don't know the four chain, the four chain is Hekka Express in the city. So you're in, you're enclosed for a longer period of time because you know, it's not making every single stop. So of course all of this is happening while we're, we are going express. And then I see this guy sitting in front of me who was also on his phone with headphones on. He kept staring over there. I saw him stop his music and also hide his phone. So I was like, that's it. Like, like any other, any other clues like are unnecessary. Like this is just it. So now I'm looking at him. And when I tell you the moment I saw him playing with the switch knife, and opening it and closing it under his sleeve, I was like, oh, nah. My heart dropped to the floor. Like, my heart dropped. I was like, oh, okay, okay. So now I really have to do something. I'm not about to make it hot. I'm not about to, you know, like, I don't know. I just, I just wanted to get out as quick as possible. But what's crazy is that I did contemplate it. I did at one point be like, should I just stick it out? Like, I'm not that, that far from my stop. What would it, like, anything could have happened if I, well, I'll tell you what I actually decided I'm doing. Continue, so he's moving things in his pocket, right? He's just moving things around and he keeps like opening it, closing it, opening and closing it. And I'm like, does he want somebody to notice him? Like, is he being funny right now or what? But he, like, after that, he just gave me the vibes that he, he's down for whatever. He also doesn't have much to lose. I don't know. Or maybe it's mental health. Like, I have you just never know. And now he's putting it in his sleeve, and I'm like, yo, get me out of here now. When I tell you, the moment we approach the stops, because I always get more nervous when we're approaching stops, because that's the moment where they probably, like, do what they have to do with you, and then book it. You know, so I'm like, okay, please don't get off on this stop. Please don't get off on this stop. Or I was hoping he got off on this stop so that I could stay. Um, but because I was by the door, he also had to pass me. So those were all concerns that I was just thinking about. And the moment the doors open, the way how I turned that corner and booked it, you would have thought there was somebody after me. You literally would have thought there was somebody after me. I booked it and I was dodging people who were like getting off the train because that was their stop. And they were like, and I was just like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And I made it to the next cart. So the same train, but the next cart. And when I tell you while I was running, I looked back and I saw the lady running as well. We never got to exchange any words, but we were all on the same accord. So that was that. And I'm like, yo, that was really the moment, I, I, like anything could have happened. And if I would have let my ego get the best of me, who knows what could have happened, you know? So that was a lesson within itself. Like sometimes you feel like, oh, you just too lazy or let me just wing it or nothing, or it wouldn't be me. Like it's not gonna happen to me. It's not gonna, you know? You never know and I promise you it is not worth the risk. Trust me, I have literally gone through so many things in the subway that I can literally make a series about it. So if y'all, if that's something that y'all want, if you guys would be down to hear like subway series or something like that, cause so I've done witness so many things, I've done experience so many things, <sighs> it's crazy, but yeah, I just wanna say be safe, guys. Be very vigilant. Um, I don't know why, I just feel like things are a little crazier nowadays. Maybe it's the weather, maybe it's the pan the panoramic, maybe it's, it could be anything. Like, I just feel like mental health and all of that is just like at an all time high right now. So just be super aware of your surroundings. Things are not the same. But I did wanna give you guys some tippity tips. So one thing that I do is if I'm on the train, if I'm walking, or if I'm somewhere in public, and I don't feel safe, or it can be a sketchy area, I'll have my AirPods on, like my headphones in, but I will not play music. Because I think a key component is just staying out the way and not standing out to certain people. Even though, you know, again, people could do anything to whoever, people could be watching you without you even knowing. You could be a target before you even like, take those precautions you know what i'm saying like anything can happen but 
I found that when I have my headphones in, I kind of just blend in with the crowd and people don't necessarily notice you in a sense. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I hope I am. But do not have music playing because you should look like you're minding your business, but know everybody's moves. If there's like an argument going on beside you, you should be able to hear what's going on just in case things pop off. Don't be that one. God forbid you're in a situation where you had to run, but you missed the cue, you missed all the signs because you were so zoned into your music. Like, th that's what I mean. Like, judgment, you know? Like, pay attention to small things. When people come into the subways, like, look at them. Don't, don't like start issues like it was good you know what i'm saying <laughs> but look at them you know like just observe them like read the room you know all the time just read the room don't be so stuck on your phone because because at that point you're just an easy target you know but if you can hear people's moves because they think that you're minding your business because they think that you're not really paying attention then you can and you can be a, a step ahead of them you know um so that's one thing another thing that I think is super important is if you do not have a self-defense like weapon or you know a self-defense tool I guess in your pocket or anything use your keys if you have keys what I do is I will put my keys in between my fingers and then I'll just like ball my ball my fist and just have it in my um in my pocket that's if you do not have anything else you know um just be prepared like it might not be as effective as other tools, but can definitely do some damage, especially when you're in the moment and you're in fight or flight. Um, it can do what it has to do. If you are ever, which God forbid, I hope you never are, in a situation like I was just in, or you see somebody suspicious, or you're sitting across from somebody who's just like being weird, put your phone in your pocket, right? But start moving things around in your pocket, even if you don't have anything, no keys, no nothing, just start playing in your pocket so that you can kind of suggest to them, like, play with me if you want to. You know what I'm saying? Like, play with me if you want to. Like, just in case, just in case you had an idea of doing anything. So that's another one. And the final one and the most important, important, important tip, I think, to this whole like street etiquette or this whole subway etiquette traveling to and from etiquette is pray so you know i pray the moment i get up especially when i know i'm gonna travel i pray all my way to the train i pray over my family i pray over the conductor i pray over the train itself i pray over the people who are going to be riding with me i just pray over like the mental health of the people who are on the train the homeless people who i know will be on the train just pray on the train too sometimes i go into deep prayer on the train because i see something happening or i just feel like somebody needs it like it's obviously to myself and also on my way back from the train to my house, like after I'm done, on my way back, that's when I really go in because just making it home at the end of the day is so underrated and it's so overlooked and it's so very much taken for granted. Not gonna lie, like to be able to come back home, shower, rest your head, and be greeted by um, family or if you live alone, you know, just be greeted by by peace and just to have somewhere, you know, because some people did not make it home. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want it to be so deep and dramatic, but it's a fact like so many people don't make it home. So I pray so much. I thank God for like being able to, you know, the and the closer I get home, I'm just I just praying and thanking God, like, thank you for giving me another day, another chance to do this because somebody didn't somebody didn't and that travel time like when you're not at home when you're not safe or somewhere because you know sometimes i know because i know for people home can also just not be a safe space so i consider that as well but just praying that we made it through the day that we're okay that we're breathing that we're not hurt that we weren't you know um somewhere being violated or like in any way you know i think 
prayer and I'm not gonna lie anytime I pray right before I get on the train I just feel protected like I literally feel like I have a bubble around me I feel like I could think clearly I feel like my judgment is a lot better I can detect certain things a lot easier because I prayed you know I literally feel a lot more at peace being on the subways and experience all these things every day we might find it normal as New Yorkers but it is not normal you know, a lot of these things can be traumatizing and just seeing it every day, every day, every day. Like it can make people very fearful, fearful of certain things because you're leaving your house and you don't know what someone's intention was when they left their home or when they left wherever they were coming from. You don't know what their motives were that day and what they wanted to do, what they wanted to accomplish. And you, you know, God, God forbid, like you could have been in that line of fire. So is that the saying line of fire um so yeah that, like i don't know i hope you know i truly i really hope you guys got something out of this conversation again this is one of many stories that i have on the subway things i've witnessed things i've experienced things i've yeah witnessed like so if you guys are interested in any of these because to be honest as traumatic as these experiences have been some that I have lost sleep over. As traumatic as they, have, as they have been, there has always been a lesson. There has always, always, always been a lesson or, or a moment of growth from that experience. You know, like one experience might have helped me become a little more savvy in another, in another area of my life or if that same situation happened again and that kind of cycle. So yeah guys thank you thank you so much if you guys made it to the end of this video i love you yeah if you love me make sure you subscribe because if not <laughs> that would be great but no um enough talking thank you thank you thank you guys so much if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you leave a thumbs up comment below and hit that subscribe button peace